Here we go. A little bit of piece of a little technology that we're bringing to you. And we're bringing somebody who I really have enjoyed. I think I've talked to her at least once, maybe twice. And the last time we talked with Angie Tagto, a registered dietitian, but one of those diet registered dietitians who I really love because she just doesn't keep repeating the Bible that all reg- registered dietitians do. Uh, last time, Angie, you and I talked, we talked about your trip to Italy. It was a special conference. You have a website that is sort of devoted to your Italian experience. Tell me what's different between the food culture between the United States and Europe. Well, I think because of the extensive food culture that Italy does have, they are now recognizing that the the Western and the modern food industry is really starting to impact their food culture. And not only the dietitians in Italy, but uh, public health practitioners and even farmers and food processors are recognizing that they need to hold on to those food traditions and those food cultures that have really extended thousands of years um, in Italy's history. And so they're recognizing that these outside influences are really starting to impact not only their economic uh, 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 culture, uh, food culture, but also from a health standpoint as well, and that um, their traditional Italian diets and Italian foods are now being replaced by more processed and packaged items, and consequently they're seeing more health effects. Okay, Angie, is that difference between Europe, primarily Italy, and the United States is it a matter of awareness or is it more a matter of tradition? Here in the United States, we really we don't have a firmly rooted agricultural tradition. Although, uh, if, you know, you go back 100 years and, you know, almost everything was agriculture, but we don't seem to have that 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 traditional sense. I, I, which one of the two or maybe it's a combination of both things that are playing here? I think it's a combination of both. And, and the biggest differences in agriculture between what the United States knows and what Italy knows is primarily scale and diversity. Okay. Italy grows much more diverse food products versus what the United States now does. Um, in the United States, we have this intensive monoculture cropping system, especially yeah. here in the Midwest. And it's gotten to the point where both Italy and the United States are now seeing, I want to use the term food security um, as a potential threat to, to both countries because Italy, not only losing its food culture, is now also reducing the amount of lands that are being used to grow food, importing more foods, but also here in the United States. Um, for example, uh, the amount of fresh produce that we now import into the United States, over 50% of it that we consume comes from other countries. Hmm. So from a a national security standpoint, from a domestic food security standpoint, I think Italy and the United States as well as so many other countries are now realizing that this isn't a good position to be in. We can be more self-supporting by growing our own food. And so there's a lot of of, uh, influences in making some of these decisions about how the soil is used, what is being grown, and what's available for eaters to consume. As you know very well, one of the forces that has changed probably has been the the greatest reason for change in terms of the American food system has been the multinational corporation. We can look at the Monsanto's, Sagentas, all of those. Mm-hmm. Have those big multinational corporations been attacking the European vis-a-vis Italian food culture and how successful have they been? Hard for me to really uh, respond to that with my limited exposure there but with the little bit of time that I did spend in in professional settings with other dietitians, with the medical profession, um, public health practitioners, it was my observation that it wasn't as intense and as um, 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 extroverted as it wa- as it is here. That 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 awareness of multinational com- corporations it wasn't as well known to me there. wasn't as apparent to me there 
as what it is here. And, you know, the European Union has set up a variety of policies now that really help the, the 26, 27 countries better preserve what they grow and their connections back to their traditional food cultures. You know, I've heard several people talk about that very fact. And because of that fact, the big multinational food companies, we'll call them, mm -hmm. have more or less decided they're going to pass on Europe for now and they're going to work more on the underdeveloped countries. They're going to be easy pickings and maybe they'll come back to Europe at some other point. But are we in this migration of information, if you will? I mean, you're going to Italy. You're giving them our experiences. You're telling them stories, many times horror stories, about what's going on here. Is with this migrating information, are we benefiting from this? In other words, do you think that we will see, in the relatively short term, 10 years, 20 years, that we will get smarter with our food system? Or do you think their experience in Europe is energy wasted that we just will not plug into? Well, I'm seeing uh, a, a new trend evolve, um, especially in the, the sciences of sustainable agriculture and organic agriculture, and even to some degree nutrition sciences, in which United States is now looking at more of the evidence-based research that's being done in Europe, mm -hmm. and now applying it back here. Um, in many areas of, of nutrition and health and medicine, um, there has been this, this um, um, re um, regard for European research as being less than desirable. And so <laughs> sure. many times, you know, the United States does not pick up on, on that research or use it as part of their evidence-based collection. But I'm seeing more people, especially in the agricultural areas, um, look at many of the new pieces of research that are coming out of Europe and including them as part of their library and and using the results from that, that research. So I think there's a trend that's happening and what is, I, I've always felt that Europe has had been a few light years ahead of the United States when it comes to not only agricultural production but also diversifying their, their diets and uh, because they've had certain geographical parameters set on them in which the United States doesn't necessarily have that has forced them to make some of these decisions. Um, and now that the European Union does uphold, such as the organic standards, the biological farming standards that they have in place. Yeah. So I, I think there is a, because of the, the local organic and sustainable food movement here in the United States, there might be a greater acceptance now of the research and the practical applications that are now being done in Europe. Is this impetus coming from government, or is it, pardon the expression, more of a grassroots sort of movement? I, I see it more as a grassroots movement. There's a lot of NGOs, nonprofits, and other organizations, both domestic and international organizations, that are really perpetuating a lot of this movement. You know, just today, before you and I had this uh, this video conversation, I saw a story. Uh, the two longest lived or lived nations in the world, one was San Marino, which of course is in, in Italy, essentially, mm -hmm. and the other one is Japan. Obviously, what those two countries are doing, we need to start incorporating into our lifestyle because we are way down the list. We are not number one and maybe we can learn from other people and apparently we're be that information is beginning to seep into our system correct right. well anyway that is our introduction to angie tagto registered dietitian one of my favorite rds in the world and we will have her on regularly to be talking about health and food issues in the near future angie thank you a bunch thank you